this one's called The Bernstein Bears Life with Papa. When, pa when Mama is gone for a day or two, what will the Cubs and Papa Bear do? Uh-oh, Mama's going away. Uh-oh, Mama's going away. Hey, we're pretty cute when we're babies, said Brother Bear. As the family looked through a photo album one day, you're still pretty cute, said Mama Bear, giving him and his sister a big hug. Mama, please, protested Brother Bear. What do you think Cousin Bertha's baby will look like? Sister Bear wondered. Like Cousin Bertha and Cousin Bert, of course, said Mama. No. Cousin Bertha, who lived on the other side of the forest, was expecting her first cub quite soon. Then Mama sighed and said, I do wish I could stay with her for a few days. Being a first-time Mama Bear ain't easy. I think I could be a big help. Sounds like a good idea to me, said Papa Bear. What's going to stop you? Oh. Oh, Papa Bear, Papa Bear, what have you got yourself into? What's going to stop me, Huff Mama? Who's going to take care of things when I'm gone? The cooking, the cleaning, the shopping, and all of the other things I need tending to. Yours truly, Papa Cube Bear, Bear of course, said Papa, puffing his chest. Not only can I handle the job, but I can handle half asleep with one hand tied behind me. Oh, is that so, said Mama. Well, let me tell you a thing or two. That's when the phone rang. It was Cousin Bert with some news. Twins, exclaimed Mama when she heard the big news. Then she hung up. She said, that settles it. I will have to spend a few days helping out. As for things here at home, I'll do what I can before I leave and just hope for the best. Bye, Mama, shouted the cops as she drove away in the family car. And don't worry, shouted Papa. I can handle things here at home. No trouble at all. Do you think it's going to be trouble or no trouble? Uh, trouble. Trouble? Not only that, he added, when Mama's out of sight, I'm going to handle them like they've never been handled before. First, I think I'll give the rugs a good cleaning. Okay, Papa, said the cubs. We'll get the vacuum cleaner. Forget it, said Papa. I'm going to clean it an old-fashioned way. I'm going to get that deep, deep down dirt out of the rug with a, with a, a beater. Then he snatched up all the rugs and was out the door. It wasn't until the cubs heard a whack, a whack of the rug beater that they remembered something important. One of the jobs Mama had done before she left was to hang the washout on the line. Uh oh. So that the the wash could dry. Wait, Papa, wait! They shouted, rushing out the door, but they were too late. Just try to do this with the vacuum cleaner, said Papa, as he whacked another cloud of deep dirt out of the rugs. When brother and sister pointed out that the deep down dirt, a uh, rug dirt was now all over the wash, he said, don't worry, it surely rain before Mama comes back, and it will rinse it all off. Oh no, there's the rugs, and there's the clean wash, and all the dust is getting on the clean wash that's drying, and it's wet wash, so it's going to stick more. Meanwhile, you and the cubs are in for a real treat, because it's lunchtime. I'm going to make my triple flip honey mustard pancakes. Honey mustard, they, they said, each making a face. But the third flip, Papa got a little carried away and flipped the pancakes so high that they stuck to the ceiling. Not to worry, he said as he scraped the gooey mess off the ceiling. He served it to them. Mama's ceiling is clean enough to eat off of. <laughs> and said, Papa, what would be, what could be nicer after a good lunch than a cozy fire in the fireplace? Don't forget to open the few screamed the cubs as the as he lit the fire but once again they were too late since the smoke couldn't escape the chimney it billowed through the house oh no the smoke is not going up the chimney it's gone in the house now uh oh oh papa this looks like a lot of trouble josiah not to worry yelled papa trying to beat the fire out with his best pillows but 
all this trouble was a burst of pillow, or all he got for his trouble was a burst pillow and clouds and feathers. The fire hissed and steamed his brother and sister doused it with water. Buckets of water, that would do it. Better than a pillow. What a mess. Smoke, feathers. We got gunk in the fireplace. We got pancake goo on the ceiling. Dirty wash on the line. That's when the phone rang again. It was Mama. It turned out that Cousin Bertha's neighbors were giving her so much help that Mama wasn't needed. She was starting home and would soon arrive. Oh, man. Mama's not going to be happy. When the Bear family neighbors, Mrs. Skunk, saw smoke and feathers billowing from the treehouse windows, he knew something must be very wrong and came over to offer his help. We're beyond help, said Papa Bear. But, but when the cubs explained things to him, Mr. Skunk said, You're never beyond help when you have friends. He called upon the forest friend to make quickly to make more quickly than it takes to tell the creatures of the forest pitched to clean up the mess. Wow, that was nice creatures to help clean up that horrible stinking mess everywhere. Birds and butterflies fanned the smoke with their wings. Squirrels dusted their tails. Frogs snagged the feathers with their sticky tongues. Raccoons rinsed the dirty wash in the in the brook. Papa, brother, sister bear, um, Papa, brother, and sister bear helped too, of course. Then, just as the last feather was snagged, the last bit of dust was whisked from the fireplace, Mama Bear arrived home. After hugs from Papa and the cubs, and a report on the twins, she looked around the house. The house looks wonderful. My dear, she said, however, how did you manage it? Well, said Papa, it did take a little doing. And out of the cubs, under their breath, a little undoing. <laughs> That's pretty silly.